What's up guys, it's your girl Frisk Me Good, your favorite fashion designer and fashion icon. And welcome back to my channel where we talk all things fashion. So today, I'm going to be continuing my new series, So Nostalgic, where we talk about iconic fashion brands and fads that made a significant impact on pop culture. In this series, we explore the rise, the fall, or the comeback of fashion empires that made their mark on history. But guys, speaking of history, it's Black History Month, and y'all know I couldn't continue my series without acknowledging some of the influential black fashion icons and trends that have significantly influenced today's fashion scene. In the world of hip hop and urban fashion, there's one accessory that has become synonymous with status, style, and self-expression. I'm talking about grills. Looking back on the early 2000s, many of us can finally reminisce about a common childhood ritual. Wrapping aluminum foil around our teeth and imagining ourselves adorned with bling. It symbolized the aspiration to one day own our own piece of mouth jewelry. Grills emerged as a quintessential statement piece in the world of street culture during the early 90s and the Y2K renaissance. But how did these dazzling adornments come to symbolize the epitome of bling? Today, we're going to be taking a journey through the evolution of grills, from their humble beginnings to their mainstream popularity. So let's dive into the rich history of grills and explore their profound influence on the fashion landscape. While grills may appear ubiquitous in today's culture, mouth bling isn't new. Grills have been appearing, disappearing, and reappearing throughout human history in fits and spurts as civilizations have risen and fallen around the world. Tracing their origin story reveals threads of ancient misogyny, class warfare, and lost scientific studies and artifacts. Random internet pages and word of mouth folklore have long credited the Egyptians with the creation of grills due to a rumored discovery of two gold teeth connected by wire. Archaeologists when on Earth blinged out mummified remains that dated back to approximately 2500 BC in Giza. Initially, it was hypothesized that these teeth were wired while the individual was alive. However, upon further examination and speculation, it was suggested by Dr. Phil Sleek in 1967 that the jewelry wasn't fashioned together as a mouthpiece, but a pendant worn by somebody with poor dental hygiene. Thus, what is often thought of as the earliest form of grills is speculated to be nothing more than a gold chain. The earliest confirmed case of grills seem to have originated in Italy, where they were crafted by the Etruscans. During the 1800s, American archaeologists commenced excavations in Rome. But the majority of the recovered gold teeth from the Etrusian era underwent an evasive journey from one researcher to another, eventually finding their way to America, only to be lost during the transfer process. Their disappearance was all but assured, as these teeth were only scarcely mentioned in obscure journals. However, in 1999, in a study called Etrusian Gold Dental Appliances, three newly discovered examples, Marshall Joseph Becker meticulously compiled the information that was available. The documentation revealed approximately 20 sets of teeth intricately woven with delicate golden wire, comparable in size to a thick rubber band. The earliest of these artifacts dated back to the 7th century BC, where affluent Etrusian women were among the earliest individuals known to sport what we now recognize as a grill. Their gold teeth would serve as a symbol of relative equality. Wealthy and liberated, they possessed the autonomy to allocate their resources as they saw fit. But that freedom, along with Etrusian language, culture, and grills, disappeared when the Romans took over Italy. By 100 AD, the teeth had fallen out of fashion. Later, the Mayans will also experiment with grill-like tooth decor during their classical era from 500 to 1000 AD. Mayan rulers, both kings and queens, adopted a distinctive dental practice. They would drill holes approximately 3 meters in diameter into their upper teeth, inserting round pieces of the precious green jade stone into these perforations. Preference was given to jade pieces with a lighter, more translucent shade of green and was considered superior in quality. Mayan professionals such as architects and sculptors who were at a lower socioeconomic status lacked the means to acquire jade. So instead, they resorted to modifying their teeth through filing, as the practice was considered significantly superior to leaving the teeth unaltered. While some in the lower caste may have modified their teeth as part of ritualistic traditions, the royal and the wealthy wore tooth decor as a symbol of status and wealth and as a statement of responsibility. Jay was known to be the symbol of agriculture and the monarchy will wear it as a reminder of their duty to feed the people. 
But similar to the decline of Etrusian grills, the Mayans stopped inserting jade into their teeth after the Spanish conquest in the 1500s. As a new leader and culture took over, grills once again disappeared. Over in Southeast Asia, gold was believed to establish a connection to cosmological energies. According to ancient Filipino mythology, Milu, the creator of the world, possessed pure gold teeth, inspiring mortals in the Philippines to emulate this divine trait. Early evidence indicates that they began decorating their teeth with gold around 1300 AD, while also engaging in practices such as filing and deliberately blackening their pearly whites. Meanwhile, nations in the northern part of the Philippines would adapt the practice of embedding gold pegs into their teeth. Individuals would drill up to nine small holes in their teeth to accommodate these pegs in an intricate process that required an immense amount of patience. As their rulers transitioned to coastal areas at the onset of the second millennium AD, they became increasingly involved in long distance trade with socially stratified societies, emphasizing the need to showcase wealth and status. Evidence suggests the chief compounds house metal workshops, facilitating the creation of gold teeth as a permanent emblem of social distinction and enabling ongoing modifications. However, by the early 1600s, public exhibitions of wealth would cease as elite Filipinos were compelled to surrender their gold to Spanish conquistadors. At the same time, the Spanish viewed tooth modification as a barbaric practice. According to Father Buenaventura in Vocabulario, he wrote, quote, Whoever files his teeth, I will surely punish. In other regions of the Philippines, specifically in Cabanyan, individuals swathed themselves with custom gold-fitted bands, known as chakang, which enveloped the entire front row of the teeth. Despite making speech nearly impossible, these historical artifacts bear the closest resemblance to what we know as contemporary grills. They were passed down as cherished family heirlooms, and Chakong would survive well into the mid-20th century, continuing to be worn during traditional rituals. Leading into the late 20th century, descendants of ancient Mayans residing in present-day southeastern Mexico would inconspicuously continue the tradition of wearing mouth jewelry. An article published in the Journal of the Massachusetts Dental Society estimated that approximately 65% of Guatemalans sported some form of gold dental decoration. In Central America, local dentists prominently displayed their names alongside images not of pristine teeth, but of dazzling gold dental embellishments. As their culture migrated northward, their newfound settlement will lead to a shift in perspective. E.J. Nieberger, an American dentist, recounts his interactions with Central American patients who would schedule appointments to replace their gold teeth with what they referred to as American crowns. A significant number of immigrants would choose to relinquish their gold dental accessories as they strive to assimilate into the American way of life, aligning with the historical pattern of one culture superseding another. But as Central Americans adapted their dental aesthetics to align with Western norms, mainstream Americans began embracing the more lavish option. In the 1970s, parts of the West Indies, specifically Jamaica, went through a slow economic period where there wasn't much money for dental care. So gold teeth became a viable option. Shaba Ranks, known for having one gold tooth, sported the trend not as a fashion statement, but more likely due to the lack of adequate dental resources. Soon after their golden renaissance, West Indians would migrate to New York, bringing along their gold teeth and sending money back home for proper dental care. By the late 1970s, gold teeth had exploded in popularity in mostly black neighborhoods of New York City. In the past, New Yorkers referred to grills as gold fronts, and many young trendsetters at the time adorned themselves with a pair to flaunt their affluence, similar to the ancient Mayans and Etrusians. Started picking up like a snowball effect between 87 and 89, snowball effect. 1990, everybody had them. Uptown in the Bronx, you ain't see too many people with gold teeth. Out here in Queens, you seen it because this is where, you know, where they make them at. Brooklyn, everybody. Because Brooklyn and Queens is only separated by the middle of a street. On one side of Atlantic Avenue is Brooklyn, on the other side is Queens. So it's like really the same thing. Manhattan, they wasn't really doing it. But like I said, you have like a, a lot of older people who was doing it before everybody. But theirs were for dental purposes. These people, we was doing it for street reasons. It's unclear who the first rapper was to wear a grill. 
But when Slick Rick released his debut album in 1988, his glittery grin would change hip hop forever. Though he had risen to fame four years earlier performing as MC Ricky D as a part of Dougie Fresh's Get Fresh crew, the release of The Great Adventures of Slick Rick is what established the London-born rapper as a style icon. On the sleeve of the album's lead single, Teenage Love, Rick unleashes a smile sporting three gold teeth, the middle of which is embellished with twinkling diamonds. Shortly after, OG rappers like Big Daddy Kane and Cool G Rap will follow suit sporting the trend. And soon, Atlanta rappers like Kilo Ali and Raheem the Dream will also popularize the term fronts. One of the most important pioneers of the grill's renaissance is Eddie Mouthful of Gold's Plane, who became a fronts icon in the 1980s. Plane was living in Brooklyn, but while visiting his home country Suriname in South America, he broke his tooth and was offered a gold cover. He wasn't ready to commit, but the offer made him think of the statement piece jewelry like watches and big gold chains that he saw in the hip hop community. He came up with the idea of temporary gold crowns and soon began selling them out of a pawn shop in Queens. He hit big when rapper Just Ice bought a grill from him and wore it on promotional materials. Before long, Plain would open up his own shop that he decided to call Famous Eddie's, where his client list would go on to include Jay-Z, Nas, Run DNC, and more. His loud and ever-present grills were one of the most famous fronts of the era. However, as the popularity of his gold grills grew, so did the always hungry New York City competition. As Plain was being copied by neighborhood vendors, and he refused to lower his prices to match the market. Hey, how you doing? This is me, Paul, here at A1 Grills. As I was explaining, we do some nice quality gold crowns. I got my friends that came to holler at me from Milwaukee. I'd like him to speak to you a little bit more about the teeth. Yeah, my name is Pat. We come uh, all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Good 12 hour drive. You know, we uh, heard some about a, like an Eddie's gold teeth or something, but we got to applaud A1 Grills to get it done right and be shining right. I came and got like my top six the first time. I liked it. It came back at the bottom. Then, you know, he didn't did a lot of people in the city. Got the whole city shining now. By 1989, he shut down Famous Eddie's in New York and set up shop in Atlanta, where his business boomed with the help of rappers like Outkast, Little John, and Ludacris. Yeah, so right here, just that Right here. I don't it's dirty or what, Show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blinged yeah. out. Yeah. Been blinged yeah. out. It ain't nothing yeah. new. Oh, I'm going to get some new in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's up, Andy? 2004, baby. Four more, baby. You know what it is. 2004, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear with that. Yo, y'all already know this. 2004, baby. Eddie the Innovator. Do that shit. Bringing the grill straight through you. Pop them in. If you want to see pop them out. If you got to go to court, holler to the boy, man. Kill Mike. I'm going back to get grilled up tomorrow. Much I done lost four, man. Got to get one more. Look out for all invisible princess cuts on the next album. Much more, more for that other time before. Four. Eddie's going to see Killer Kill down by law. Shit. By the 1990s, Flavor Flav would popularize them even further, accentuating his signature style with a giant clock necklace and gold fronts on his teeth. Over the subsequent decade, grills began taking on whole new forms. When Wu-Tang Clan members The RZA and Method Man were pictured with metal vampire fangs, fans of the trend would begin to see it as a form of artistic self-expression. Grills will become a visual representation exaggerating the essence of hip hop and serving as the tangible expression of ostentation alongside the act of flaunting. It will be viewed as the noun to flossing's verb. You understand? Come here. Come here. Show him that stuff. Show him that stuff. You understand? Show him that. 520 on the top for these dying right too. Gold teeth is like, you know, in my city, it's crucial, you know? Motherfuckers got they work hard to get it and get it and they gon' get they shine on. That's what it's all about, you dang. It's like religion down here in the N.O. You know, niggas get they shit gold up, shined up. Growing up as little kids, you heard? Used to put Luna Furl in our mouth. Used to put candy wrappers in our mouth. You know, try to look like the bigger people. You know, my grandpa had gold teeth. He had them since he was little up to now. He dead and gone. It's just a heritage. That's some hood shit too though, you know. Niggas that live in the streets, live by the street code, live the street life. Six at the bottom, you dig, dig it. I'm doing it on a down low, you heard me? For real. 
Six, two at the top, four at the bottom, you understand what I'm saying? Shit real, you understand? It's like that down here, you understand? Like Gotta be got four up. at the top and none at the bottom. It's real like that. Well, I'm gonna like tell you like that. this. I got 32 on my side, you understand? And I got 17 in my back pocket. So take it how you want. <laughs> Johnny Dang, a native of Vietnam who will arguably become the most famous of all grill artists, opened up his shop in Houston in 1996. Dang was familiar with gold teeth because his grandparents wore them, but it was the demand for jewel grills that inspired him to start his wildly successful grill empire. All right. What's up, it's Johnny Dang. Welcome to my store in Houston, Texas right now. Let me show you a couple of pictures on the wall. That's it. one of uh, my uh, celebrity client. Few of my celebrity clients. So uh, three days ago, Snoop went to Houston. He stopped by my store. I have a lot of love from artists. So whenever they in town, they stop by me. Even sometimes they buy 100 to 100,000. Sometimes they just buy a couple thousand for fun. While working in his family's jewelry repair business, Dang will meet Paul Wall, a Houston rapper gaining notoriety in the local hip hop scene after releasing a few mixtapes with fellow Texan rapper Chameleon Air. In 2002, Wall persuaded Dane to go into business with him. Combining Dane's jewelry skills with Wall's rap connections, the pair would eventually sell grills to some of the biggest names around. Yeah, for sure, man. Me and TV Johnny, my partner in the jewelry, you know, we, we've been just going at it. We got a new store in Houston in the, in the Galleria Mall on the third floor next to Neiman Marcus. So we went from the hood to, you know, in the mall with the skating rink and Neiman Marcus and the Gucci store, you know what I'm saying? So we just really took it to another level. We got our own line of watches and we do all custom jewelry, not just the grills. So we've been you know, making, making a little bit of bread off of that, you know? This led to a collaboration with Nelly for the smash hit Grills in 2005. After the video launched, they would see a huge spike in business immediately after the song came out. As Nelly announced, Grills slipped into the American consciousness. The music video for Grill was the highlight of the blinged out accessory in popular mainstream culture. Because of the popularity of the video, which features over 50 grills, cameos by Paul Wall and Johnny Dang, and plenty of jaw dropping bling, just about everybody knew what a grill was. God bless my boy Nelly, man. That boy here, man, he reached out to me to get on the song Grills. Grill song ended up being the number one song in the country. It was number one on Billboard, and it ended up being a real, we got nominated for a Grammy. The song was just a straight up commercial for us. Cause we did Nelly Grill, so Nelly going everywhere telling them, yeah, Paul Wall did my grill. Yeah, shout out to my boy Paul Wall, he did the grill. Then we shot the video. We put TV Johnny in the video too. At that time, people didn't really know who TV Johnny was. You know, it'd be a thousand jewelers out there named Johnny. So you don't know who they talking about or which one you talking about, you know what. As the jeweler made a name for himself in the industry as TV Johnny, he would find himself in competition with a man by the same name, except they called him King Johnny. The jeweler would dub himself the original pioneer of the exotic gold and diamond industry. He would steal TV Johnny's clients and gain new ones that would vouch for his grills being the superior of the two. The Johnny over at Sharptown Mall is the Johnny, that's not the Johnny. The Johnny is where you at right now. Right now you live and direct in Johnny's jeweler. You seen it firsthand in the hood. One day, uh, DJ Screw came over here. DJ Screw is one of the pioneers of the Screwed Up Sound. They, he has his own little theme, uh, Screwed Up Click, with DJ Screw, Lil Kiki, Fat Pat, Lil Flip, Zero. And uh, they are the ones who started this whole uh, phenomenon on the south side of Houston. Okay, I'm the Black Al Capone, the notorious underboss of Lil Flip, over at Clover G Records. And we get all our diamonds made by Johnny the Jeweler, King. Johnny the jeweler. Say it with me. King Johnny the jeweler. One more time. King Johnny the jeweler. This is the, this is the jewelry store for the stars. Some of his celebrity clientele included rappers like Mike Jones, Lil Flip, and Rick Ross. He will also attract the attention of NBA players like Shaquille O'Neal. Although his attempt at overtaking the Houston grill scene was profitable, Johnny Dang will remain the undisputed champion in the court of public opinion. Following the spike in popularity driven by Nelly's grills, an inevitable backlash drove four districts in Texas to ban kids from wearing grills to school. The ban, which was passed by the Board of Trustees in the Arlington, Irving, Grand Prairie, and DeSoto districts, aimed to eliminate grills because they are, as one board member put it, 
a major distraction issue. Arlington School Board President Sherry Way said, quote, it was starting to become a thing of who can come to school with the biggest grill. And that's not what school is supposed to be about. I mean, those things are expensive. You can put diamonds in them, they're gaudy. So leave them in the videos or in the shopping malls. While they were deemed a potential distraction to school children, grills have actually never been found to cause any serious harm. According to Colgate and the American Dental Association, wearing a grill is safe as long as you keep it clean and don't wear it all the time. <laughs> all right, cool. So three things to remember if you're gonna do a grill, like our young man in the video. Number one is make sure that you have a low cavity risk. And the way to do this is talk to your dentist, about using rinses that are high in fluoride and also ask your dentist if you do have a high cavity risk. Number two, uh, never cement a grill. Just have it to where you can you know, remove it and you don't want it permanently on your teeth. And then number three, you gotta make it look good. Over the years, Hollywood would show great interest in urban culture by incorporating different elements of hip hop into mainstream cinema. Grills will be featured in a number of iconic films symbolizing wealth, status, and edginess. One of the earliest cinematic portrayals comes from the 1977 James Bond film titled The Spy Who Loved Me, where the character Jaws played by Richard Kill sported a pair of deadly steel grills, which became an iconic part of his character. Though these grills served a more functional purpose as tools of mass destruction, they were a precursor to the decorative grills that would come to fruition in later years. The bling will also make appearances in cult classics in the black community, like BAPS in 1997, where Holly Berry and Natalie DeSalle play vulgar and garish homegirls from Decatur, Georgia, with artificial eight inch nails and sparkly gold teeth, flawlessly embodying the exquisite beauty of the early ghetto fabulous aesthetic. In later years, the grill would take on a more symbolic role in Barry Jenkins' Oscar-winning 2016 film, Moonlight, when Sharon, a young adult in the midst of an identity crisis, uses a set of gold-plated fronts as a part of a steely outer shell. Grappling with black masculinity, Moonlight's use of the grill calls into question the effects of hip-hop's excessive exterior on the inner selves of the young men who consume it. Grills will even make their way onto runways and fashion magazines, with designers like Kamora Lee Simmons, the CEO of Baby Fat, incorporating them into their fashion shows. It's all about the grills right now. It's about the bling. It's about the guys that wore the gold teeth back in the day. Honey, it's cultural. The grill is whack, man. It's off the hook. I never thought I'd be wearing a grill, but Kamora Lee, what can you do? <laughs> I mean, it's different. No other show has had this before. I mean, it's like a first. So when people see it, they're going to be like, wow. And when that light hits the girl, it's going to be crazy. And crazy it was. Regardless of the unapologetic attitude behind the label, the summer collection was wearable, though that was not exactly Kamora's primary concern. I really don't give a damn if you can wear it or not. It's beautiful and it's sexy and it'll get you a date. It'll get you laid, it'll get you recognized, it'll make you feel sexy. So those are all good things. It's a lot of edge, it, it, um, it's a lot of skin, you know, summer, right? So it's a very sexy show. I think it's fun, it's very creative in terms of, you know, it's not, not only inspired by what you might see in, in, uh, in the stores, but by what's in our heart. Some more iconic grills in fashion history include Grace Jones wearing fronts on a 1975 cover of Vogue Paris. Once regarded as an accessory exclusive to immigrants or affluent rappers, grills began to permeate mainstream culture in the early 2010s when celebrities such as Miley Cyrus and Katy Perry showcased them at prestigious events like the Olympics, the Met Gala, and even in music videos. Katy Perry flashes a million dollar diamond studded grill in her music video, Dark Horse. That's a lot of rock for three seconds of airtime. There are grills, but this is Katy Perry. Come on. Million dollar smile maker, Dr. Bill Dorfman grilled Katy, so we grilled him for details. Bye. I started to design the grill, and then I called my laboratory, Da Vinci Dental, and we started laying out the diamonds on models and whatnot, and kind of moving them around and moving the jewels around. And eventually, we came up with this, which is the real grill that she used. 
While initially facing criticism for cultural appropriation, the positive attention they received prompted some individuals on social media to highlight the double standards in media coverage. Noting the shift from viewing grills as ghetto to fashionable once they were embraced by white people. Still, many believe that grills will always remain an accessory endemic to the black community. In places like Baltimore and Atlanta, it's almost a rite of passage to get a custom pair of grills. Today, they remain immensely popular among rap and hip hop stars, as well as athletes, often featuring more extravagant designs than ever before, including shimmering diamond dust finishes, dazzling trillion cuts, and an abundance of diamonds and gold. In 2022, ASAP Rocky's video for DMB co-starring the mother of his child, Rihanna, Rocky smiles and his grill asks, marry me. Rihanna smiles back and reveals her answer in the matching font, I do. Recently, Kanye West would even get an 850K titanium grill inspired by Jaws from James Bond. Because of the grill's appearance, many fans speculated that West had his teeth removed to fit the accessory. But Dr. Thomas Connolly, a dentist in New York, reassured fans otherwise. Kanye West just replaced his teeth with $850,000 titanium dentures. So take a good look at this smile, y'all, because it's worth more than probably all of us. So Kanye just got titanium dentures installed on the top and bottom row of his gums. And apparently this was a surgical procedure, so I don't know if he still has real teeth or not. $850,000? and he pulled all of his teeth i gotta look into this a few moments later Alrighty, i'm back it's not quite exactly what you think it is now a lot of people are reporting he pulled all of his teeth and then some other people are reporting no he's still got all of his teeth but what actually happened is equally kind of bad and good I, I don't know you let me know what you think so first off no kanye west did not pull all of his teeth to get what we call implant supported dentures which is where they screw things in to your bone and then those teeth are set there but he didn't also get just grills or removable grills that have all of his real teeth underneath in fact he got basically kind of a, a middle ground so basically what Kanye West got is what we consider permanent grills and permanent grills are basically crowns on every single one of your teeth so what they did for him is they didn't pull his teeth but they did shave every single one of Kanye West's teeth down and the reason why you have to do this is because if you just put dentures over your teeth they're super big they're super bulky because you got this extra layer over all of your teeth and most of the time your occlusion doesn't fit good and some bad things happen so what they had to do was shave down all of his teeth and then replace what they shaved down with the metal and then obviously they do the occlusion to make sure everything fits perfectly at the same time the crazy part is he pretty much did ruin every single one of his teeth. And if he ever wants to get these grills removed or taken off, yes, he does have some tooth structure underneath, but he would have to get full replacement crowns on every single one of his teeth to get a natural tooth look back. But this wouldn't be the first time Kanye West sported a grill that would confuse the media and fans alike. In 2010, he added a bit of sparkle to his smile with a diamond piece and joked that he got his teeth ripped out. Break, I was pointing, I, I said, what's, what's with the grill here? And you said it's not a grill. Yeah, it's like really my real teeth. I, so uh, you have, <laughs> now is that on top of your teeth or do you take your teeth out and then put in, it's diamond and gold. Mm -hmm. It's your real teeth. <laughs> you just put it on top of your teeth? No, it's like replaced my bottom row You've of teeth. You ripped all with, those teeth out and put in that? I, I just thought the diamonds were cooler. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait, show it again, because they have a close-up. So, so then I said, how do you, how do you, you can't floss, it's just on one side or the other. And then how do you, you brush with? Well, I used to always clean my jewelry with toothpaste anyway, so it works out, you know. <laughs> wow. So when somebody goes, you've got a little kale in your diamonds, you know? Yeah. Like, you just get food stuck in your diamonds, not your teeth. Yeah, exactly. I gotta go to the dentist all the time and stuff. So just to what do they say it. when you go into the dentist, you've got diamonds as teeth? I mean, it's just certain stuff that rock stars are supposed to do, you know? Oh. <laughs> Kanye's daughter, North, is also following in her dad's footsteps when it comes to sporting a sparkly smile. In a series of photos shared via TikTok, North gave us an up-close look at her dazzling new dental jewelry. The popularity of this trend today is likely influenced by the widespread use of social media, where celebrities and jewelers can effortlessly showcase their grills to a global audience. 
For some, the excitement of grills is less about the status and celebrity appeal and more about reconnecting or reclaiming a part of their culture. With the stigma gone, some see a chance to explore the origins of grills as an authentic expression of one's unique street culture. Others see an opportunity to take grills to new territory altogether, as artists are expressing their passion into grills that look different from the fronts that we became accustomed to. While its popularity is at an all-time high, the future trajectory of grills still remains uncertain. Will they evolve into a quintessential accessory for the fashion forward? Will avant-garde artistic pieces dominate the scene? Or will the trend gradually fade, returning grills to their roots within the realm of underground street culture? Beyond serving as symbols of status and opulence, the history of grills perhaps embodies a rebellious spirit. And much like how the Roman Empire and Spanish conquistadors viewed dental accessories among the conquered with disdain, dismissing them as primitive or ritualistic, many in the mainstream initially perceived grills in the same light. But those deeply connected to the culture recognize the inherent beauty within grills. They proudly embrace and innovate this profound ancient tradition by intergenerationally evolving the iconic trend. Grills transcended their origins in human history and became a symbol of self-expression and luxury in the wider fashion landscape. Whether you see them as a symbol of opulence or a form of artistic expression, there's no denying the lasting impact of grills in pop culture. They transformed from a niche accessory to a global phenomenon embraced by fashion forward individuals of all backgrounds. But there you have it folks, the fascinating history of grills and their influence on fashion. Let me know in the the comments below if you rock grills or if you're considering trying them or if you made it to the end of the video leave me a comment letting me know what fad or fashion empire you want to hear about next don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can talk all things fashion okay bye